Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the Faith-Based Filmmakers Industry Insider Summit. Please welcome your hosts, Patty Rice and Michael Shin. Hey, beautiful people. Y'all look great. I see some very familiar faces. How's everybody doing? I'm Patty Rice. It's so good to be here with you guys today. I'm the organizer of Faith-Based Filmmakers, a vision that God gave me. And what we are is a network of creatives, filmmakers, actors, writers, directors, et cetera, who come together and we network, we collaborate on projects together. We just wanna build a family community where we all can just get together and make awesome art that glorifies God, stuff that tells meaningful stories, you know, stuff that just makes a difference, especially in this world today. We know all of the things that have happened and are happening in this world. People need hope. They need something that they can go to and look at that will be meaningful and touch them in an inspiring way. And so that's what faith-based filmmakers are. I'm thankful that um, you know, we were able to come here and host our Industry Insiders Summit. And I just wanna take just a couple minutes to thank a few people that were part of this planning process. Um, I wanted to uh, just give a shout out, number one, to Donald who sang those amazing songs. Thank you so much. <laughs> I'm not sure where he stepped out to, but he was awesome. Donald, thank you so much. And then also I want to thank um, one of the co-sponsors of our networking portion, her name is Monica Willis of uh, Hair Moments with Mo, and she's awesome um, to have really come out and supported us uh, in our networking. Um, I also, more than anything, want to thank uh, the team who put this together. I mean, it's a lot that goes on on the back end that you all don't see, and you know, people have taken up their time to do this, and we just want to say thank you, we appreciate you. And then last but not least, I want to thank um, Pastor T. Way, Bishop Al Way, for allowing us to host this event here. They have been so gracious to us, and I just wanted to definitely acknowledge them. And at this time, what I want to do is hand it over for my co-host, Michael Cleos Chin, to say a few words, and then we're going to pass it on to Pastor T so that we can get this conversation going that we've all been waiting to have with these industry insiders. Yeah, so... I see a lot of familiar faces, so I appreciate you all for showing up. This is awesome. Um, but beyond just the conversation, we definitely, like she said, we're com uh, creating a community of faith-based. Um, and so we'll have next level steps that, you know, it can just go beyond just being, you know, a conversation, Q and A's, but very interactive that way, you know, everyone that truly wants this opportunity uh, will be able to level up. So definitely, you know, definitely stick to the end. And um, yeah, she said it all, so. Without further ado, let's get it. So now we're going to pass the baton over to this awesome woman of God, Pastor T. Way, who is going to be our moderator today. <laughs> Pastor T, take it away. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. Amen. You all look beautiful. Give yourselves a hand clap for coming out in 100 degree weather. What an awesome, awesome afternoon. I am Pastor T. Way, and welcome to the Industry Insider Summit. Welcome to Fame Church International, where our vision is to make Jesus famous, to make Jesus first, to make a difference, to make his praise glorious, and to make disciples of all men. We welcome you to our house, and we hope you feel comfortable, and we are just excited about what's going on today. I am Pastor T, and I pastor this wonderful assembly with my awesome, awesome husband, my covering, my man of God, the Honorable Bishop Dr. Al Way, and we give him honor today in his absence. So, you know, since we're in his house, we're going to bow our heads for a word of prayer. How about that? Amen. So, Father, we thank you for this time. Thank you for all your many blessings. You've been good. You've been kind. Thank you for the gathering of just wanting to do something great for the kingdom. And we bless everyone that's here today. And we pray, oh God, that we will leave here encouraged, that we will leave here inspired, knowing, oh God, that we can use our gifts and talents that you gave to us when we were in our mother's womb and that we can use them for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on, somebody. Just tell them amen. It just means so be it. Okay, I'll be moderating today this amazing panel discussion with some wonderful industry guests that I'll introduce in just a moment. Today we are here to talk about what Hollywood wants, how to fast track your faith-based entertainment career. The conversation is to allow us to hear from industry experts who understand the business. They've taken time out of their busy schedules to give advice and insight on 
how to find resources and training to help you grow in your craft. Come on, everybody know you need some resources out there. How to get your work noticed by the right people. Everybody needs a butler. Can I get an amen? How to break into the business the right way and what not to do as you move up into the industry. I think that is so good. Not only know what to do, but what not to do. The insiders on our panel have been producing, directing, writing, acting, and just doing incredible work in their entertainment for a long time. At this time, I want to introduce our wonderful and our amazing cast today that we have today. First, help me welcome a talented production professional who has worked on films and shows such as Step It Up To, The Wire, and We Own This City. Welcome, Mr. Larry Cadal. Larry, would you come and join us? <laughs> Woo! Awesome, awesome. And next, we have a dynamic associate producer, writer, director, who has worked in production on shows like Scandal, Uh-huh, This Is Us, my daughter's favorite, and in films such as Jason Bourne and Wonder Woman. Let's welcome Mr. Leon Mitchell. Come on, Leon. We welcome you to the stage. Yes, Mr. Leon Mitchell. We have the amazing writer and director of the hit movie, Sinners Wanted which starred Lamont Rucker and Clifton Power. Help me welcome Mr. Jimmy Jenkins. Come on. He's a homegrown in the area DMV, brother. God bless you. So nice to see you again. God bless you. Amen, amen. I'm not going to tell you who his daddy is because he wants to ride on his own coattail today. John Jenkins. <laughs> OK, so uh, next we have the talented actor who appears as Nurse Brian on Double Cross, Mr. Faith Milante. Come on, Faith. I love that name. How can you go wrong with a name like Faith? Gotta have it. Amen. And this person needs no introduction. I met her and I love you already. Amen. She has a wonderful personality. But if you have children a little older, that's blah, blah, blah years old, you all will know her as a child actress. But OK, now we have many of us know and love our next panelist for years. She is a remarkable producer and actress who played Laura Winslow in the hit show Family Matters. Let's welcome the beautiful and talented Miss Kelly Williams. <laughs> Amen, amen. And last but not least, we have our Zoom audience, amen, that will be coming on. But we want to introduce um, the phenomenal executive producer of the hit show, Double Cross, Mr. Howard Gibson will be joining us. Amen, give him a great big hand clap. And our award-winning book publisher, a movie producer with a, a string of successful films and founder of Megamind uh, Media, Miss Tressa Smallwood. So they'll be coming on Zoom and we'll be so happy to hear them. And they're here. Hey, how y'all doing? You all look absolutely beautiful. We're so happy to have them with us today. So everybody joining me and giving our guests another round of applause. Come on, somebody. Let's celebrate it. Let's celebrate them. Come on, somebody. Amen. We just want to just celebrate, and we are so honored and just so thankful that they took time out of their busy schedules to come and join us today. Um, and so we're now going to get started with our discussion, because I know you all want to hear some things, and we want to hear from them today. And we're going to learn about what Hollywood, what Hollywood wants. So my first question is going to be to everybody. OK, so let me have a seat, because you know I got on heels. And me and Kelly had a discussion about them shoes downstairs. I'm taking hers home with me when this is all over with today. That she said, not with them little feet. <laughs> I wrapped them when I was a kid. <laughs> Okay, um, so we want to hear from the panel and we want to give everybody an opportunity to, um, to just um, answer this question. How has the entertainment industry changed in the past five years and what do you predict will happen in the next five years? So I want Tressa and um, Howard to start out with those two questions. Tressa, we want to start ladies with you. First, ladies first. Uh, hey, Howard. Okay. Um, so I would, I would say that um, there are more opportunities for African-Americans um, in general um, that has happened over the last five years. Also, I believe that writers and producers have more opportunities because the doors are open for creatives who are willing to take a shot on themselves. Um, I, I believe that prior to five years ago, it was all about only what the studios wanted or what they could do. But now that filmmakers are really showing what they have and that we're able to be successful without Hollywood, they're paying attention. So it's changed and it's our time. Awesome. Yeah, I, I would say, it, I would add to that. Uh, it's more, it, um, it's about business too. You really understand it because we do have the opportunity. We need to get to understand what the business models are behind it and understand that. And once we can understand the business, we can pretty much produce anything we want. And, and uh, this industry is shifting and changing to the point where it's for us, you know, they want to see us. So we have to 
start telling our own story and learn the business. It can take about a minute or two. But, um, yeah, I mean, just like Tressa was saying, that, you know, the gatekeepers are no longer there. I hear you. The gatekeepers are no longer there. You don't need to have somebody who is an institution in Hollywood to introduce you anymore. Wow. People are making films and putting them on even YouTube, getting noticed and having them uh, distributed by major companies. Mm -hmm. So I think the main thing that I want any creative to understand is, is that you have everything that you need within your own personal resources. You don't need to know this person to get in because you just make a great film and people will notice. Wow, that's interesting. Because it's changed because you used to have, have, there were so many gatekeepers at one time. Sure. Faith, how did you? Uh, with the panelists, um, it, it, it has been a lot more opportunities and um, even if about streaming right now, you know, different streaming services, more app for people to be able to create, um, have stuff no, and um, you know, I, I, thank you. <laughs> it's going in and out, going in and out. I know, um, <laughs> but no, I, like I said, like I was saying, it's, it's a lot more opportunities, even just with the streaming services right now, um, and, and it's more uh, accessible as well too. You know, people are able to just kind of go right there at the phone. You go at your tablet, you know. Um, so I think that in the next five years, that kind of like how right now we don't have a, a blockbusters anymore, like. You know, people used to be pressed about DVDs and CDs. I grew up in a little bit different time, you know, so <laughs> everything is streaming now and it's accessible. You got uh, YouTube, you know, um, and all that. So Tubi, uh, Hulu, I mean, Amazon Prime, name them, you got it, you know. So um, I just feel like it's going to come to a point in the next five years where it might be completely streaming, you know, and maybe it just be streaming only and yeah, that might be the next next wave. Awesome. Jimmy, you want to answer that? Uh, I think overall, the, the essence of film and storytelling, it's, it's, it's evolved to also understand. I think this um, Y'all wanna just talk regular? They can't hear you, so. Okay, um, just share this mic then, okay. Um, so I, I think the times are evolved. What's most important, I think, what people really have to understand, if you wanna get into the industry to make money, it's the wrong industry. If you wanna get into this industry to change the world and impact lives, it's the right industry. Wow. So that's that's, that's what's most important. There is no, it's very rare you find blockbusters. Who knows, you guys know what a blockbuster is? Yes. A film that makes $100 million or more, something like that. It's very rare, very, very rare. People ain't going to theaters no more. People got so much content. The things and the unique people that are standing out are people that have something to say. And there's so many people trying to say something. There's so many diluted messages. You have to be so unique in your words to stand out. Wow. So if you have nothing to say, or if you wanna do this to make money, this is not it, try to go into uh, uh, multimedia marketing or something, but if you want to find a way to touch somebody's heart and change somebody, this could be a great industry for you. Wow. It's a hard act to follow. Jimmy. I know that's right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would say what's changed in the last five years will probably be able to connect with anybody. Um, using social media just to reach out, just to make that opportunity. Uh, it's nothing now just to DM somebody to say, hey, um, I had this project or, hey, how did you do this? Or, hey, just, just to get simple advice. I know there's countless times, like me, me, me meeting Jimmy for the first time at a rental house and him coming up to talk to me, just, I don't know, connecting through social media and stuff through that. You know what I mean? It's, I don't think you could have done that five, 10 years ago. And where I see the industry going more so now, like everything's streaming, I do think that we're gonna move to a point where everything, like content's gonna be like augmented reality in a sense or uh, like everything's with the Oculus. So you'll be able to start seeing movies and like and actually be immersed in those movies experiences. It's like you, now you can watch NBA games on, on the side, court side. You'll probably be able to watch movies, you know, be in the theater, but be at your house or be on that actual set watching filmmakers make the film, but you'll be in your house. So I feel like that's what's next um, with like virtual reality and, and moving industry like that. So just being ahead of the curve to, you know, what's going to happen then you know, you'll be ahead of the curve so people come to you to get that content. That's good. Larry. Yeah, I would have to say um, technology has um, brought us a lot closer, um, has gave us uh, accessibility. Um, I can remember, you know, 10, 15 years ago, if you, you know, you do a casting call, you know, some people, like I'm from Baltimore, right? And we would have to go, shout out to Baltimore in the building. Baltimore in the um, house. You know, we would have to, you know, either go to New York, you know what I'm saying? You know, Philly, Jersey, you know what I'm saying? Before we had a, a industry that was, you know, in Baltimore, but we had to go to those places. Now we can get on Zoom, you know what I'm saying? You can audition on Zoom, you can do a table reading on Zoom, you know what I'm saying? Like you don't have to waste that money, you know what I'm saying, to go all the way across the world if you don't know you're gonna secure that spot, right? So I think technology has uh, gave us the opportunity to actually like, like be right there in front of them. 
And then to piggyback off uh, what Leon said, um, actually, um, augmented reality, that's just like um, being in the metaverse. That, that's not far. That's not 10 years or five years. That's like now, you know what I'm saying? Giving us the opportunity to actually, like you said, be on that set, seeing them film, but you're not actually there, but you're actually there. Um, I think that's the great thing. Technology basically brought us closer. Wow, come on and give them, that was an awesome answer. You all did just amazing. Okay, and this is for Tressa and Howard. We, we always want to start with our Zoom um, first. So where do you see faith-based and uplifting content going in the next few years? Tressa, Howard, where do you see it going? Howard, you want to go first? Um, there's, a, you know, there's no limit to content and the strength of content. As long as your stories are strong, I think the world is going to respond. And I think when it comes to faith-based content, I think we need to get out of the very parochial mindset of, you know, when we see at the end of uh, faith-based songs and they just dance and they sing and shout, and that's the end of the movie. We've seen that before. And I think what the world is looking for and asking, and what we all can see in the world what's happening is people searching for a higher calling and a higher power in this confusing world. And I think now more than ever, you know, we need to cultivate those stories and tell those stories in a universal way. One thing about and how we look at content and how we, we create our own internal content, we, we write our own scripts. I mean, I've been writing for 30 years. So I've seen this shift from, we talked about technology, but I'll go back. Let me just go backwards real quick. I wanna make this point. I, I saw it when it was film, you know, where we would have reels of film we had to get those, we had to shoot those, expose it. First off, put it into a camera and make sure it's in there right, check the gate, make sure we didn't mess it up to load it up. There's so much process with that. I even remember when I was younger, editing my movie with film, taping it, pushing it, getting splinters on my hand with gloves on, smelling the chemical. So we're talking years and years and years of this. Now we're talking augmented reality and virtual in virtual reality, and it's true, we need to grow, we need to get ready. And when we're also talking about faith-based projects, we're talking about supernatural. In my mind, because I wanna be universal and I wanna to touch the world, I'm talking about adding that technology to it, guys. Learning how to create, you know, uh, floods and, and, you know, mayhem on a shoestring budget right at home on your desktop. There's so much you can do when it comes to faith based. There is zero limit. And so I, I just want you guys to know, like, that is what we all have to do. We got to expand our mind in the universe. When you start putting out something online on YouTube, it's not touching DC, Maryland, Virginia. It's touching the world. You know, and and and, and faith can, can relate. You know, one day, I, because the pandemic was happening with Double Cross and we didn't pretty much know exactly where the numbers were. There was somebody who called me up and said, Howard, did you check your YouTube premium? I said, no, it was 146 million. That's not just America. Right. So when I look at that, I'm like, oh, so that's helping me to say, I need to expand our storytelling. Everybody around the world is seeing us right. and is gonna see you. And so when you're touching God, God is for all, not just for a very niche market. So my suggestion when you want to empower yourself for the next five years storytelling is going to be your first line of defense and how to execute that story is your second thank you so much that was an awesome answer you know if you got a phone you got a movie the phones have become amazing Tressa, would you like to add anything to that yeah i, I would also say i've seen a shift uh for faith-based films even on the network and executive side as well um, when Jimmy and I uh, produced Centers Wanted in 2017, I don't remember as many faith-based films being out at the time. Um, so we really knew we had something special and that we were going to be able to really touch that market. Um, since then, we've constantly seen a lot of um, networks who typically would not touch faith-based films. They're now like, hey, what do you have? You know, e even for me, um, in a lot of different meetings now, they're saying, hey, do you have any faith-based projects? Do you have any movies? Do you have any series? So it's a want now versus five years ago, it was not there. So to all those writers out there and creatives, 
now is the time to get those projects done because people want them, the world wants them. And it's, it's more acceptable again to the network side. Um, you know, as a creative, you can just produce it yourself anyway. You don't really have to wait for somebody else to tell you yes. Um, but if you are looking for a network to fund you, now is the time to get in position to pitch those projects. Thank you so much. I have a question for the whole panel that's here. And does anybody want to add anything you want me to? Everybody good? Okay. So um, what has helped you out to where you are in the business today? And I'm going to start from Kelly and just go here down. What has helped you out, Kelly, the most? Community. Community. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, I actually remember Howard as a filmmaker. He used to be with my dad all the time, and my dad thought he was such a great, he's this is a genius, he's going to be so. Now, I see that uh, my father don't make a move without my father first. Wow. So I think, um, yeah. okay, that, yeah, I think it's community. I think that, you know, now with the pandemic and everything that's going on, and we're seeing that our values and who we are is important. It's the thing that kept us this long, but it's also the thing that will continue to keep us. You know, God, you know, the center of who we are, that will always be that way. So I think that we should return back to who we are. My father-in-law moved to South Africa, and he was likening their struggle from apartheid to the um, struggle in this country about the civil rights. And he was saying to me that it's very similar because now over there, they've traded their values for other people's stuff. I don't think we should ever abandon who we are to fit mm. in, ever. So I think that with all the things that are going on, we're returning back to who we are, the stories we want to tell, and and all of that. Pass that one down to Faith. And pass that one down to Faith. Um, yes. Yeah, so for me in particular, uh, I would like to say networking across um, versus focusing on networking up. Um, for example, like I, I've been able to do projects. I've been fortunate enough to do projects with Jimmy with. Howard with Tressa, um, and so, you know, and we're, we're all um, representatives of this DMV area, you know, so working on their projects, um, it, it starts to become like a, a family environment, right? And so just something that has, has been successful for me, even being on a project that feels like fam family, is still professional, still business, mm. and we still have an end goal at the end of the day, and um, that is to have the impact on the world, you know? Um, so with that being said, um, something that has been successful for me on the way is, being in that work environment, um, you know, doing the work and, and showing up on time and making sure that you're uh, proactive and you're knowledgeable about everything that's going on. Education is key. Um, I'm very um, ambitious and, and talented and, and passionate, right? But I, I, in order for me to be the very best version of myself, and I believe for anybody else to be the very best version of their selves, you have to be knowledgeable. And, and education gives you that. So um, for me in particular, I went to New York Film Academy um, in Los Angeles, and I got my master's in acting for film. And while I was in that program, um, I made sure, that, once again, that I was networking, going to different events like this. Like you guys are, what you guys are doing right now is, is, is something that I was doing all the time. Um, you know, and so finding myself doing things like that, education, networking events, networking with people across and networking with people up, um, and, and just being in the moment and living in the moment and living true to who I was in those moments, um, it created other opportunities. And, I'm going to end with this. There's a success formula that I learned a long time ago when I was playing football. I'm a former athlete, and it's um, proper preparation prevents poor performance. And the formula is when you have opportunity and preparation, it equals success. And so, you know, education is making sure that I'm prepared and ready for the opportunities when you're able to work with family like Jimmy, Howard, and Tressa. And in the success, God does the rest. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. I'm going to throw out another. You want to answer that one? Or can I throw you out another one, Jimmy? Okay. Let me throw this out. And I also want to hear from uh, Tressa and Howard on this one also. What are some practical, actionable steps emerging filmmakers can take to fast track their career? Or is there anything like fast track in your career? Ain't no, fa ain't no shortcut. It's one way. It's only one way. It's only one way. Um, you know, people, I've been lucky. I've been fortunate. But I've also been doing it. I'm 31 now. And I've been doing it since I was 19. But people don't really see that. I was on Showtime when I was 29 with my first documentary. Me and Tressa had our movie come out. I think I was 28. And like, man, how you do this off? I'm like, man, I've been doing it for 10 years. You just haven't heard right. about me. Right. But what really made me understand and get to, to move forward, I got a long way to go. But I found something to stand on. So every time I sit down at my desk, to, to, every day I work, it ain't a day to go by that I don't work on my craft, but I know what I stand on, and I know what I want to do when I'm, I'm not writing my stories to entertain, I'm writing my stories to turn hearts around. That's my whole purpose. And so, and so when you got a mission, when you got a method, when you got a, a message that you got for the world, God's going to make a way. 
And so it ain't no reason, like, I don't deserve to be, before I'm 30, to be on Showtime, to be on TV One, to be on BT, BT Plus. God showed me I was faithful over my little stage plays at 19. I was faithful over my little movie I made at 22 with $2,000 that I had to shoot edit by myself. When you can, sh when people come comes in like, how much money can I make? How much you paying? If you're looking for money and all that, it's gonna be hard to, to, to grow. And I think for everybody, man, you gotta understand what, what Jesus did, man, that's for me. I, I'm not, I don't wanna entertain you, I wanna be more like Jesus. And when mm. my films are done, it ain't about, a lot of TV now is about sex, murder, and that stuff is, is all in the Bible, but my goal is to turn people to Christ. And, and, and I think that even with the church, we get sometimes confused. Sometimes we spend way more money inside the church. If you are a church home and you're spending more money in the church than you are outside of church, you just as lost as the world. Because Jesus was not in the walls. He was with the sinners. We, and, and, and if you guys don't know, my father's a pastor. His name's Pastor John Kenneth Jenkins, the First Baptist Church in Glenarden. It took him a long time to get it. But in 2010, I said, Daddy, what are you doing outside the church? He said, no, we got to worry about Sunday service, Sunday service, Sunday service. But 2015, he started to get it. And now you got 15,000 people coming into the church, but you got over 200,000 watching outside of the church. So the key is to understand what are you doing to grow outside of the walls. Thank you so much. Come on, I want to hear from these two guys on the end. Come on, Leon and, and Larry. Um, I would say if you're trying to for me, it's this one. Y'all know they all gonna work tomorrow morning for praise and worship, right? <laughs> Y'all already know that. <laughs> so how I more so broke into the industry, I, I went to a school called Full Sail out in Florida. And pretty much, uh, it was an accelerated school. It is more so trade, more so folks focused on all of the behind the scenes stuff to, you know, to get on sets and whatnot. That it's not like the glamorous stuff. But what I did learn there was that all the jobs, like you know the credits rolls at the end of the movie? Like all of those are jobs. So I knew like there's over 300 jobs or opportunities for me to get on set in order for me to learn to produce and learn to, to you know, direct or learn to do whatever. So from there, um, I moved back to Maryland and uh, there was a rental house called The Washington Source. And what they did, they would rent lighting equipment to film sets. And I started working there uh, probably for like three years, but every, what was cool about the job is that every time someone would come and order these lights or whatnot, I would just ask for a chance to get on set. Like, hey, can I, you know, open up your C-stand? Like, pass this around, do a light or whatever. And you know, eventually people would say yes, and I kept getting on more and more sets, so eventually I just left the job, and I'm working full time doing gaffing on big major projects. And uh, yeah, so I would say like, that's my best way. It's like, again, like the networking, reaching out. It's all about like who you know, and I got that job through a friend that I met at Full Sail, you know, that also was trying to get, break into the industry. And he said, hey, Leon, there's a job, at, you know, so try that. So I, I'd say like that would be the best way, and then also just if you want to find a way, just look up the names at the end of the credits. And then, like I said, social media, reach out. And um, that's how I was able to work on Insecure. Just, you know, reached out to the gaffer of Insecure. It was like, hey, I'm a gaffer back in DC. Is it cool if I can work on your, your show for like a day or something like that? And he said, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? It was just a simple, just reach out. So I think social media is still powerful and that's how I've been making it so far, to be honest, and word enough. Just to piggy off of that right really quick, the transition. I mentioned earlier in my response, doing the work. And so he just gave a perfect example of what doing the work is, his own ambition, his own passion to go after it, right? I had that same similar passion that has led us to similar success in our careers. Um, I used to, when I was in my master's program, I sent out a hundred, like this is no exaggeration, like 150 emails a day. Like I went and got, I was like, before I graduate, I have to get an agent and a manager so I can make it big. Cause I was focused on, you know, getting, getting big in Hollywood and making it to make an impact. So I was like, the only way to do that is to get an agent. So I got all the information and made sure I sent out my, uh, did all these packages, my headshots, my resume, my reel, did um, student films and stuff like that as well to help build my reel because it was working because it was like, dang, how am I gonna break through an industry and I don't have credits like Wonder Woman or, or whatever, like the blockbusters that Jimmy was talking about yet. I had independent films that I was working on or, or student films that I was working on to get to where I needed to go. But God had a, a, a better plan, you know, and, and me doing the work, him doing the work, got us to what we need to do. So again, preparation, Opportunity, God does the rest. And success. And success. Yeah, 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 that's yeah. good. Trust, I want to hear from you because I know you're, you have to go in just a second. But you want to chime in on that one for you. And Larry, you can come and you can come after Trust. I want to get her before sure. she has to um, close sure. out. Yep. So, you know, I love um, a lot of what I've already heard kind of sums up what I would say um, creators really need to do to give themselves a head start. Um, and I would say number one is to jump out there and create your own project. So grab all your friends, find people, you know, you can use some of the tips that Leon gave with social media. You can find everybody who does everything that you need on a set um, to be able to make that happen. Um, I think that the key of the funding piece is what typically holds people back. They say, oh, I don't have enough money. 
Well, if you can find enough people who can do those jobs at lower rates, sometimes no rates at all, because people want credits, you know, even if it's a short, if you do that, people notice you. A lot of times people will come and ask me, how do I get a deal with you? Or how do I get my, pro how do I get my feature done? Well, I'll say, well, do you have a short? Do you have anything? I want to see something. Um, and so I think that that's a big way to get, um, you know, to get noticed. Networking, obviously we've touched on that a little bit. Um, collaborating with other people. That's the key. You know, the, the same way that everybody on this panel today, we all know each other you know, step outside that zone, go and find another group of people that you can talk to, mm -hmm. learn from, even if sometimes it's a quick conversation, sometimes it's a Zoom, sometimes it's lunch, sometimes it's networking at, you know, a film festival, but, but step outside of your comfort zone and start meeting some people so that you can start going to your next level. Absolutely. That's Absolutely. great. I want Larry and then I want um, Howard to chime in. All right, so uh, kind of a little different for me, like being in Baltimore, like it's not too many opportunities, right? So for me, how I basically broke in, I would see the trucks, the head dad trucks, I would see all the film trucks around, mm -hmm. and I'm nosy, you know, I'll be curious, George, I'm gonna go and ask questions, you know what I'm saying? I'm going and actually like, how can I be on this? Or who's in charge of this? Or, you know, who's in charge of casting? And my, my, my first time on TV, I played a dead man, right? I played a dead man on Homicide Life on the Streets, right? And I was so pumped. I'm like, yeah, I'm playing a dead man. I'm on TV. But that dead man, it, it allowed me to be a Trojan horse, right? I got in the system and I said, all right, that's a boss, that's a boss, that's a boss. I need to know the bosses. So I made myself available, comfortable enough to just be open and vulnerable and got on. And I went from being a dead man to working security, right? I said, you know what? I need to be around these actors all the time. I need to be around the producers all the time so I can figure out how I can be on. So I started working security. As I started working security, I got an opportunity to bring a clothing line in to have their clothes featured in the film, in the beauty shop. So after that, I'm like, you know what, I got it. Then I got a phone call from a friend of mine that was, that was doing security. He said, you know what, step up to the streets is coming in town. And they're mm -hmm. looking for someone to recruit the dancers. I, I'm from a dancer's background. So they gave me the opportunity to have 30 days to recruit all the people. I recruited about, I don't know, probably about a thousand people that came to the, the, the auditions and the tryouts. From that point on, the industry in Baltimore started recognizing me like, oh, he knows some people, he know this, he know them. So it basically was like gusto. I went just gorilla, right? I, I didn't go to school, you know what I'm saying? I didn't spend all this money, um, but I am a great networker. But when we talk about networking, we got the net and then we got the work. You right, right? So if it's not a good signal, the net don't work, right? So we gotta massage, the, we gotta massage that whole thing. We gotta make sure that the networks, you know how you go somewhere and somebody like, yo, take a card, get a card, and you take that card and you put it in the drawer. It's like, hold up, no. I call them, I call them 10 minutes later. I might call them 20 minutes later because that's how you allow that network to have a good signal, you know what I'm saying? So just from, from, from step up, I, I had an opportunity to work on Charm City Kings, you know what I'm saying? And then on Charm City Kings, I worked in production. And in production, the, the, the first AD he came to me after it was finished, he said he was my best PA out here. He said, because you're a liaison between the set in the community. He said, you know what, when I come back to Baltimore, I got you, I want you to work on my next film. I was sitting at home, I was listening to the audio book from We Own The City. I fell asleep on the couch listening to the We Own The City. When I woke up the next morning, I got a, it was a phone call from the first AD. He said, are you still available to work for We Own The City? Wow, and that's how that's I got awesome. on the film. Wow, mm -hmm. that is awesome. Look at those opportunities. And as you can see, everybody says you got to work that net. I like that, I'm gonna be using that forever. I'll give you credit, Larry, okay. Yeah. Howard, can I ask you a question? Mm -hmm. Okay, so my question is, what resources such as training and information would you recommend for emerging artists? What resources and training and information would you recommend? On many levels, um, but the very basic is um, YouTube. Start there, literally. If you have nothing else, start there. And start defining exactly what you want. Start understanding what you want. And then that will connect into the people who you need to connect to, who understands that world and reach out in seminars, reach out in workshops and come from nothing. Now with this conversation here, you can start from here. And that's the blessing that, you know, most of us don't have, you know? And uh, so I would say, and then look at myself in other realms right now, like, you know, I got out of the business. I started in the business in 1992 kind of burn through 
uh, in, in an incredible way. I started as Eddie Murphy's personal assistant, my very first job. I was either going to decide to go to my high school graduation or there was an opportunity for me to go to Howard University to sit and listen to Russell Williams, who was Washington from Washington, D.C., born with my mother, raised with her community based. And this was the only time he was going to be there in D.C. speaking. And it was also the same day as my high school graduation. And God, I had to pray that night. What do I want? What do I want to do? How, how do I really care about this in my life? And I was 18 and I had to make that decision. And so I left and it was the same year that Russell won Bet Academy Award for Glory and Dance with Wolves back to back for Best Sound. First time in history, uh, African-American did as such. And he was from Southeast DC, 51st Street. Wow. Two know. houses up and I was still giving his mom and dad going to store for them they were old you got me i was still going to store for them walking around and i heard about him coming up battlestar galactica and all of this stuff that he was doing woman's of bruce's place i never met him and at this date came i congratulated him on television on the phone looking at him and this was the same day he came and i said i'm gonna pray on it and i moved on to community he had never met me he only spoke to me on the phone and I sat there at Crampton Auditorium right in the front. Let me show you community, the power community. Right next to me was my mother at the front seat, but the next one was Kathy Hughes. Right behind me was Carl Payne. He played Cockroach at the time, not Cole or Martin, but just Cockroach from Cosby, right behind me. He was a Howard University student. Anthony Anderson was right next to him. Taraji Hinton was a student right behind. Those became my friends the next day. Before all of this, all community and so by that next following day i was on the set of the eddie murphy show distinguished gentleman and three days later i got on the show was hired on the show because i had a work ethic i was there but i had a work ethic for no money at all i wasn't exposed exposed i learned not to touch certain cameras and lights and uphold i couldn't touch the grip stuff with the light and stuff i had to learn immediately where everybody was still doing graduation and having their parties overnight, I was standing next to Eddie Murphy. A few weeks wow. later, Kel Kelly Williams and I met 30 wow. years ago. So that kind of journey has set me on tone. What did I want to do? And I still have remorse, if you can imagine, that was literally the next day. And I did not turn around. And I went from that moment from distinguished gentleman to boomerang to media man to serial mom to major league two years i never stopped working i left home they took me away i ended up going to true lies with james cameron it took me away so i'm first and foremost i want you all to know i'm incredibly happy to see that this is what washington dc has become okay That's you guys have to understand i have been kelly and i are we we can tell you I have been gone. I would always come back every few years and I would do something and try to coordinate something to come together. I did that back in 98 when I did Guilty by Association Lincoln Heights with, I went and got me a, a rap group out of DC in Maryland, Virginia, C Pleasant, Section 8 Mob. I got them Morgan Freeman. I put them on a movie in Lincoln Heights. I had to raise that money off the streets through the church and through the streets of people who want to stop selling drugs. Come on, let's give Howard a great minute. That you was understand awesome. me? I tell you, that was awesome. Do you understand me? And I stopped that. And then when I went to Lincoln Heights, I found that they didn't have uh, their mail for a whole year. I went to the mayor of Washington, D.C. and made it happen and took the mayor at that time back and made sure that the mail was going to be here. And I said, I got Morgan Freeman coming here. If y'all can't get him that mail, we won't show up. And, and so those things go. Those things go. And I keep coming back. And now this is the last, last few years I came back. I heard about Tressa Smallwood. She's the Don. I heard about Jenkins. I heard about all these people here. And I just letting y'all know I appreciate y'all. Come on, let's get back. Right on my heart. Oh, my. Howard, I need to get Tressa because she's getting ready to get off. Go ahead, Tressa. I just want you to know I appreciate your movement. 
I appreciate what you've done. And you know, I'm coming back as a happy camper to know that we have a community finally in Washington, D.C. Thank you. Tressa, I know you have to leave in a few minutes, but I'm going to get Tressa and then I'm going to get uh, Larry at the end because Larry, I saw you out your seat. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. I need to get Tressa because I know I don't want to lose her on Zoom and see a blank page. <laughs> there you go, sweetie. Go ahead. So I, I would say if you can um, get into any classes, number one, and, and classes are available in so many different scenarios nowadays, right? You can take, you can take um, formative classes. You can literally take classes online. There are books you can read. Um, so I would say, number one, that knowledge is, is key. Getting on sets is a biggie. Um, I mean, you, I, I think I shared uh, earlier that I'm filming right now. We have at least 15 people with us today who are students mm -hmm. and they are here to just learn. So get on somebody's set, um, get with a producer, let them know that you really want to work um, and, and be serious about it. And it doesn't matter about age. A lot of times I get people saying, hey, you know, I'm 50, I'm 60. I want to start in the business. Is there internship opportunity for me as well? Yeah, we just want people with good work ethics. So I think that um, age doesn't really matter. It's just whoever wants to do the work, we're here. Um, you know, we, we offer training, on-set training. And we have a lot of different departments. For example, at Mega My Media, we have development, we have um, on-set training, we have post-production training. So there are a lot of different avenues. And I'm sure there are a lot of other production companies in the in the DMV area who offer the same thing. That's awesome. Larry, I saw you in New York Yeah, I Kelly, just want to like next. piggyback. Like, so when people hear PA, they think, oh, that's ugly. You know, I don't want to do that job. I don't want that position. But you got to look at it in a sense, right? Without the PAs, they can't get their jobs done, right? They can't, they, the, you know, the, the director or the second, second, they're not gonna block this door off so nobody don't walk through, right? They're not gonna run and get some water because one of these actors on stage needs something to drink, right? But in those positions, you learn, and people learn you, and they learn your work ethic. Prime example, like I, I worked on We Own the City, and I came in as a PA, right? But I was the liaison between the community and, and the set. Well, six weeks into the, you know, filming, I end, end up getting pulled out to be an EMT in the Freddie Gray uprisings, right? So you never know how, you, you know, how it's gonna end, but you always gotta, you gotta humble yourself and just get in. Like I say all the time, Trojan horse, get in, and then you can find out where you really wanna go at. So when I got in, you know, I was production, but when I finished working on We Own The City, I ended up in picture cars. So all the cars that you would see in that film, any car that they was using on set, I ended up working in that, that department, and now I'm able to you know, join a union and everything to get health benefits and all that stuff, but I didn't know that, right? I had, I had certain people like Thea Washington had to tell me, like, you know, you can get benefits, and big shout out to Thea Washington. She casted 5,000 people for We Own The City, okay? 5,000, so I just wanted to say that no job is too small, no job is too big. If you get an opportunity to you know, work as a production assistant, get that job, because you never know, you might be on set, and they'd be like, you know what, ma'am, ma'am, I like your hair, I like your hair. I want you to be in this scene, this next scene, right? So you never know, right? But you gotta be there, right? That's it. That's good. We got two last questions and then we're gonna move on. Okay, so I'm, I'm, and I, everybody, look at your neighbor and say one minute. <laughs> oh no, not after everybody else and gave a speech, Slim. <laughs> nah. So anyway, when I was born, <laughs> um, Take me up too. Okay. Well, first of all, um, Tressa, we want to thank you for coming online. We love you. Come on and give Tressa. Thank you. I'm, I'm thank so you for you adding your grace here. to this awesome, awesome um, summit today. And thank you so much for, for taking time out of your schedule and joining us today. Come on, let's give Tressa a great big hand clap today. We love you. Bye bye. Okay. So, last two questions. Um, and I'm going to go down. What are some things you would caution people against doing that would hurt their career or opportunities? That's good. Uh, well, I was thinking about this when Howard was talking, and, and when you were talking, just piggyback off of that, mm -hmm. that I would caution against, and that is not living, not being out among people, ex having experiences. I think that that's actually the thing that hinders kid actors once they get a certain age. You haven't lived enough. You haven't been around people. You haven't had enough experiences. So by the time I was 20, you're so segregated from people that I'm getting roles where I have to play somebody's mother but because I had never had any kind of experience that would have informed my choices as an actor, it's, it's impotent because you don't have, you don't have the, the knowledge of what is there. Our goal is to accomplish the author's intent. It's to make you cry or to feel a real something coming through the screen where you're touched 
and pulled in. You've seen movies where you're like, oh, why am I crying? You know, because you're having a real experience based upon what's being presented to you. And so our goal as uh, creatives is to make you have some kind of real experiences that is rooted in a real emotion mm -hmm. that you can identify with and drag you in with us so that you can have a full knowledge of what it's like to be Hamlet, which is a, a Danish, based on a Danish king that was, I mean, it's such a, a random, a random uh, experience, but something about the choices you make pulls people in to understand what's going on and to have something really happen there. That's, that's my job. So live, you gotta live, you gotta go out, you gotta be among people that you don't, you know, I mean, and it's very similar to the Great Commission. You know, it's, it's not for us to be up in here with each other, it's to go out. Right. You want to have something that anybody can identify with and pull them in. You know what I mean? That's good. That's good. You want to pass that down? I'm going to have to get church on y'all uh, one minute. <laughs> yeah. We're going to keep this real short. What she said, amen, hallelujah. <laughs> what he said, amen, hallelujah. <laughs> Come on, I need some answers. Come on. Because I'll this say. is so good because... You know, everybody wants to know, you know, the pitfalls. Everybody wants to make sure they miss that pothole in the road. You know, you know it's great to know what to do, but it's also great to know what not to do. And, and, and one line I love in Hamilton, and it's talk less, smile more. <laughs> and so, and some people don't know how to talk less, you know, and so, and when you get around people, you know, like, don't use them for a come up. But like treat you like or like an ordinary person. Like, oh, I met Kelly Williams. Oh, I'm gonna give her my, you know, all my information, and I haven't even got to know you as a person. But I know that you hold a title and a position in a world that I may be interested in getting in. So I think that's really, really important that we do know what not to do. Yes. Um, just really quick and brief. Um, <laughs> don't. Uh, I just think that don't be afraid to take a shot. Like I, I believe that's it. I mean, taking that chance at the end of the day is, is the biggest thing. Taking the leap. You know, um, that's what I would caution you. Like to not be afraid to take the leap. Or like Trusta said earlier, you know, she has people calling and saying like, hey, I'm 50, I'm 60, is it too late for me? Like, no, it still rose for 50 and 60 year olds too. You know, so I think just um, taking that leap of faith, no pun intended, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I think that's uh, key in as far as just making it and, and keep, it, keep it going forward without, you know, uh, I, I don't think that you can really make a mistake in that area. As far as if you just go for it, God, like I said, God can do the rest, I'm sorry. But you know what I think is interesting that how many of us would miss our high school graduation? I mean, I mean, Howard, I, this is my first time meeting you, but I will remember you as the guy who didn't graduate from high school. You know what I'm saying? That you put something, uh, something that was so important to you, and, and, and you all are teaching us about sacrifice today. You are teaching us, you sacrificed your childhood, you know, and so, or, or things that you may, and so I think this is amazing, and so I think this is a great question. Jimmy, can you go uh, ahead? Yeah, I, you know, my thing is, I just want you guys to know, if you can't do it with nothing, you ain't gonna be able to do it with a lot. Whoa, so, so that's, that's good. You need, to, you need to say that again. No, it's, I mean, that's what really worked with me. Like, I'm, I'm serious, you wanna be a director, if you can't go make a movie with your iPhone, you ain't gonna be able to make it with a red camera. If you can't, if you wanna be an actress, if you can't go act in front of the mirror and record yourself, you ain't gonna be able to do it with the big lights on you. Wow. If you wanna be a, a, a locations manager, if you can't drive around and spot a location, you ain't gonna be able to do it when they stop paying you. So it, if you guys are here and you're not actively doing something at home by yourself, it's gonna be very hard. So keep that in mind. If you can't do it with nothing, you can't do it with a lot. And last thing, humility is always cherished. Yes. Humility. When you come in with this big old head, I met so many people that got this big old head and they got one movie on Tubi. <laughs> and I'm like, bro, that's on a free. Tubi. I mean, I'm on Tubi, like, but I, I've been. It's nothing. Humility is king. I like that. I agree, 100. percent I can think of a few things not to do, to be honest with you. So I would say the first thing, like, when you do get the opportunity to be on set, be on time. There's nothing worse than yeah, I'll hire somebody that reaches out to me and they'll they'll show up or and not like act like they really don't want to be there, but I could have gave that job to somebody else. You know what I mean? Or it, the idea is to be. 15 minutes or before your call time. Your call time is at 10, you need to be there at 9.45. I would say another thing would be uh, ask questions. So if you're on set, like a lot of times, you know, you don't want to seem like the new guy or this, that, and the third, but if you ask questions, more, more likely people are going to want to answer it because they don't want you to mess things up. So they're going to be like, all right, don't plug that in there. And you're going to be like, why? Because you're going to blow up the whole set. <laughs> like, it's like, you just, yeah, that's, that's mainly it to be honest with you. Ask questions, be on time, and yeah, meet new people, because those people that you meet on set are going to give you your next job. And yeah, as a freelancer, because that's all I really do. <laughs> I would say um, keeping your word, right? 
because your word means a lot in the film industry, right? Like he said, he bounced off the timing, right? If, you, if you're on schedule, if you're on call to be there at a certain time and you don't call, you don't show, don't expect to get another job. And it's not just that job. There's a network of PAs that they call, they have you on a list. And if you're not doing right, if, you, if you're a troubled person on set, they will blacklist you, right? So you gotta keep your word in this industry. You gotta, yeah, it's real. I, I've been blacklisted before, right? Because, and I'll tell that story. I, I was working on um, the spook that sat by the door. I had, I, was, I had like three days working on that film. And it was 100 degrees outside. And I'm 44 years old, right? And they wanted me to run up and down steps and bring in water and 21, 24 uh, uh, floors. And I started feeling real bad that day. And I didn't know what it was. I thought it was my narrow muscles. I got something called myasthenia. It's narrow muscular disease. But it wasn't. I got so tired and I went home that day. I left. And when I got home, I went to the hospital. It was COVID, right? And the young lady that was the first AD, she put my name on the blacklist and said he left, he didn't do what he had to do, and I don't want him working on none of the projects that I got anymore. So when I got on We On The City, the first AD said, you know what, I heard your name is on this blacklist and I'm gonna fix it because evidently, you're needed out here in this, in, this, in this field, you know what I'm saying? Like, when these people come from out of town and coming into my city, it's not that easy just to film, you know what I'm saying? You gotta know the environment. So after a while, you know, it got fixed and you know, I'm not on that list anymore, but keeping your word and actually communicating because if I had communicated with her efficiently and effectively, she wouldn't have felt like I left off a set, but I was exhausted. I couldn't do anything else. I was tired, my bones were hurt. And they just, you know, as a PA, they wanna work you to, if, you, if you're doing 12 hours, you're gonna do your 12 hours. You might get two more because they need you for two extra hours. And you gotta be ready. You can't be complaining, you know what I'm saying? You gotta be, you gotta put that effort out there to work because at the end of the day, like I said, I started off as a PA, but ended up in the picture car department where as a PA, you gotta stand up all day. Picture car department, I drop the car off, I take my chair and I'm sitting, so. But also, you gotta respect your limits. Slim, you got COVID, come on, Slim. <laughs> Come on, man. I mean, because people, they, they will do that to you. They will work you to death if you let them. Look, Slim, I can't make it. I mean, it's a movie. What you want me to do? Uh, hair. <laughs> I'm grateful that everything worked out. Hey, you know what? We are out of time. But come on and just give, oh, Howard. Howard, you a preacher. <laughs> yes, yes, you are. You can't see me, but I can see you. Can see, you can okay, see. you see me. Okay, so, so I'm going to give you the preacher one. You know, you know, they always say a preacher closing the door two times. You got one door to close. One minute. We got to close out because this one is almost over. Howard, you, you know what it is? And I, and I know what it is because your wealth and your not. I would just love to have lunch with you one day because your wealth. Come on and give Howard a hand. We all think he's saying, but your wealth and your knowledge is just so rich. I mean, you know, and you're just so well respected and everybody up here just speaks so well of you. And so can you just um, give us like one thing? Because I know you've been a long time. You probably got 10,000 of them, but I'm only going to need one. And then we're going to have to ask this beautiful audience if they so audience get ready because we're coming to you next. Think of a question and this wonderful panel is going to answer some of your questions this next so howard can you go ahead and just we're going to close out with you i got one question for faith do i overwork you faith uh, uh, <laughs> he, he said and if you did i ain't gonna tell you <laughs> no 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 <laughs> you do I, I i just want to say you know people like kelly people like faith whom i know very personally these people are amazing you know and they're they're focusing uh and just everything about them, you know, it rings true in honesty and how they even move and, and how they in front of the camera, they exude all of that, you know, and they really love this business and they're part of it and we are family. And so, you know, I'm just, again, I'm really happy to just see all of this, you know, transpire. I really am. Um, this has been a prayer of mine for 30 years. So I just want you all to take heed to all of this, you know, and to absorb it um i know that kelly's doing her own streaming platform coming out faith-based that's gonna happen i forget the name i gotta i gotta shout it out and i know that uh our faith came uh, off the stage we're doing set it off and uh and he's just amazing man you know i can't speak enough about him and, and jenkins i done seen your work seen you coming up before you even knew it you know uh uh, you know, and knew your dad back in the days at the church when y'all were, before you even realized it, trust, you know, I've been there. And so I just look at everything, these new guys, I appreciate you guys hustle. You know, y'all speak all of our language and I want everybody in the audience to spot, start speaking that same language. I want them to come back again and they had them same stories 
because that's what we need to build as a community and to build these things up because there's so much opportunity in streaming. There's so many opportunities right now that, you know, Michael Chin maybe can, can end it for you guys with the level up, but there's opportunities for face base right in front of you and opportunities that we are trying to produce right now. We are looking for great entire content. We're looking for people who can be, you know, directors and other producers and build out this ecosystem because the money is streaming. It's available now. It's available. And there's a way for us to get it. So God bless everybody to coming together today. <laughs> so, um, so audience, um, and so I, I want to know, and I'm gonna start off the question, um, are you guys available and reachable if somebody had an idea, you know, how would they get it up the pipeline? So are you suggesting, once again, like how would they just go do something on YouTube and hope to get discovered? Or how does that work? Jimmy, since you're... So I'm gonna I'm um, uh, say this, because uh, I'm not going a second. Yes. I just want to let you guys know, but um, I'm, not, I'm not Howard or trusted level yet. Man, Howard, man, I, I look up to you too, man. I'm glad you know my name, bro. So I'm, I'm hopefully one day we talk, but uh, I'm not on that level yet. But I do know I'm going to have to leave in a second, and yes. I will be remiss if I don't tell them that on July 8th through July 17th, I have a brand new play that's coming out at the Dave Chappelle Theater. Awesome. Here in Here in Washington, D.C. And listen, so listen, um, if you got, I would love for you guys to be there. Um, we got about nine shows. Uh, and if you go on Poor Man, it's called Poor Man Rich Soul, and it's about a man who gets on death row for being wrongfully convicted, but God somehow makes a way. So um, if you go on Poor Man Rich Soul, I got flies in the back. Um, yes. You'll get a discount today if you go and type in loyalty, you'll get a discount. I'm sorry, I had to say that. No, no, I got to that leave was one of our questions. We were going to go down and ask you. Yeah, I got to say that because I don't know how much next. time I got left. So, right, right. But I need to see y'all July 8th through the 17th. And where's it going to be at again? Dave Chappelle Theater at Duke Ellington. The Duke Ellington is renaming yes. that theater Dave Chappelle Theater. I'm you a Duke Ellington. I, I'm a Duke oh, Ellington. Oh, awesome. Yes. yes. Please be there. Please get y'all tickets today. Duke Ellington Chappelle Theater, July the 8th through the... There's some flyers going to be on that table There's in the back. There's some flyers going to be on the table. Okay, so is there anybody in the audience? There's a mic right here. And, um, yep, just, just, we want to take, we're going to take five people, the first five people. One, two, three, four, five, done. There you go. Good afternoon, everybody. How's everybody doing? Uh, my name is Victor Bell. First of all, shout out to uh, Brother Jimmy. I've been talking to Jimmy on the phone for like two years as I've been building my film, and it's good to see him face to face. Um, so two questions. Um, I know uh, 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 Osriel was saying that when you're coming into the industry, you want to have something shot so people can see what you're doing. Um, but I know a lot of times people are getting things done based on community and relationships. So with that being said, in the past I've heard pitch decks are very important. So how important are pitch decks today? What are uh, uh, producers looking for in a pitch deck to get their attention immediately? And also, in the faith with faith-based films, um, there will be films that are dynamic, but they may be controversial to the world because of the transformation and the supernatural things that are gonna happen in that film. So how important also is an NDA, because there may be someone that says, well, I really like this, or I want this, and but they, as you do it, there may be something similar, or they may, they may wanna have it, and you wanna protect yourself legally. So how important is a pitch deck, and how important is an NDA? Both important. Uh, so recently, I found out recently about the uh, pitch deck. Outside of like that, like you need a sizzle reel. So I recently had a meeting with Hulu, trying to get like a series uh, picked up and I just went with the pitch deck and whatnot. And, but they really wanted a sizzle reel, which is like the first minute and a half of kind of letting the idea of what your project is. So I would say that's what you would make sure you have that along with your pitch deck and to talk to whoever you're gonna to talk to about getting your project done so that you know, they can have a solid idea of what you're trying to do and if it's marketable for whatever distribution they're going to put it towards their audience. Yeah, I mean, pitch decks are great. I just sold two shows from, with a pitch deck. Sometimes you need a reel, too. I didn't have one, but I had a really good pitch deck. It was really detailed, and I'll send it to you. Okay, I'm going to send you mine, too. Because guess what? You're my dog. We've yeah, been talking. My man, my man. <laughs> Thank you so much. Next. Hello. <laughs> hey, hey, y'all. My name is Sarai Quinish. I can call me Bri, like the bread. Um, hey, Larry. Mr. Larry? Larry? Okay, I'm 21, all right. <laughs> so I just um, really love and commend you how like you really advocate for like production assisting because I do that now. Um, and I, I'm from um, Philadelphia, so any type of like production assistant opportunities and everything because I'm a rising actress, a rising Christian actress, praise the Lord, um, I would love to be on set with you. That's dope, that's dope, that's dope. Put your beard in there. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Thank you all for being here. My name is Calvin Tucker. Um, I also worked on Wonder Woman and um, Charm City Kings. My question is, 
Uh, right, right. <laughs> My question is, do y'all have any go-to audition tips? Go-to audition tips? Uh, yes. <clears throat> um, Go-to go audition tips that I would, I would do, for one, doing the character background um, and really being able to do the research on that character background to make the character like what she spoke about earlier um, as realistic as possible. So when you take people on this journey, um, it's something that they can relate to. You know, even if it's not something that they experienced personally, maybe they know someone who did experience it or, or, or a situation that they were in that it reminds them of, or whatever the case may be. So um, an auditioning technique, um, a lot of people try to focus on the lines, like, oh, I gotta know all these lines before I go in this audition, and, and you do. Um, but again, the intent behind what you're doing and, and behind the lines, that's what's more important to focus on, um, uh, bringing that to life. And if you have a character uh, background, and you do the research on that character, understand who that character fully is, because it is separate from you, and we're all human, so you I mean, at the end of the day, we all have that in alignment, and as an artist or creative, what you have is your instrument, right? And so you just utilize what you have to support who that character is, because it's not you, it's the character. Um, so that would be my auditioning technique to make sure you, you do that research, um, yeah, and, and focus on the intent behind the words, not the words, because the story is what matters. In that particular scene, you have an uh, overall objective, and then you might have a scene objective. And, I, I, and within that given scene that you're auditioning for to get the, the, the big role or the overall role, um, I think it's very key to be specific with your choices based upon the research you've done. So that would be my advice. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. You. Did I answer your question? Yeah. Faith, thank you so much for being with us today. Yes, yes. I know you have to leave. I do, I do. I, I, I would love to stay and answer like any more questions. So if somebody has anything really quick, whether it's in the audience or in line, I can just answer it. And then I am going to have to head okay. to Okay, okay. I just got a, just got a message. You were, yep, you were on a time machine. Okay. Did I see Lisa Moss? That's a great question. Um, as far as trials and tribulations along the way, um, like, we, like we spoke about uh, earlier, the sacrifices, right? The sacrifices that we have to make. And so those are the biggest trials and tribulations um, that I have faced. Um, I have children, so I had to, my children are here, I'm from this area, um, and, and my children are here, but I, I was working, and my work is in LA, um, in Atlanta, you know? And so um, this is why, it's a, this is a great event, and I'm happy to be a part of this, because it's about bridging the gap, right? And for people who are from this area, you know, I, was, I actually got my haircut today, and um, it was, First time that I had went to this barber, but it was through a recommendation. Long story short, he was um, my my guy was rec um, excuse me bragging about me like, oh, you don't know my boy. He he on the, all these shows and da, 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 all these movies. And so I'm again like Jimmy said, I'm humble. I don't like to go and be like, oh, I'm on this, I'm that because I'm not that person when I walk into the room. I'm the person that God made me, you know. And I always keep my humility first. Um, but anyways, he was like, yeah. Uh, you know, this, this is my friend, this and he on this TV show. He was like, what? You from DC and you made it in the, in the acting industry? Like, how is that even possible? You know, and so I say, I say all that to say, you know, it's about taking that leap of faith and, and, and making sure that, you know, you, when you take that leap, that you, you understand that there will be sacrifices along the way and trials and tribulations along the way. And what's gonna push you through in your weakest moments, because I've had some, um, but in those weakest moments, I've relied on, I'm a, I'm, I'm, my name is Faith, you know, this is a faith, faith thing, so I'm not saying this to be cliche, but I rely on my strength from God to push me through and pull me through those trials and tribulations. And, and honestly, the same way that he's given me the success, and I'm, I'm, you, you, you have a happy moment when you're successful, right? You're like, oh, this is successful, or happy birthday, or whatever, and things are going well. But when things are negative, you dwell in them longer, and you kind of focus on the negativity of it, and, and, and it puts you in this turmoil, whatever the case may be. So what I do is treat my positives like my negatives. I celebrate everyone, no matter how big or small it might be. And when I am in those moments, because I am human, and I am weak, I rely on my God, and I know that I'm still stronger because he is helping me, you know? So that's, that's my good. little bit. Man. Howard, I want you to answer whatever question that comes up. I want to hear from you next. Okay, I'm an African filmmaker from Nigeria. The African community here are facing challenges. First, the cultural difference. Two, the asset. I'm a film director from Nigeria. We call it Nollywood, that's the Hollywood of Africa. I've submitted some of my show reels, my content to a lot of producers. Oh, you're creative, you're dynamic, but it's not what I want. Almost stereotype kind of answer. Except for people like Paddy, who's giving me a chance to be on a set as a second assistant director. Thank you so much. God bless you. That's I made a lot of, this made a lot of African filmmakers here from our own community. The actors say they don't want us. 
We keep going for auditions. We keep getting turned down. So we formed a little industry where we do our own thing. The fact-based film back home is not selling. It's not common. So, Mr. Howard, what way do you think we can break through from this challenge that the African filmmakers have here? Thank you, sir. All right. First off, I will say that the African American um, and the Africans they, they normally don't translate in the international market. It's just two different cultures. So, um, but I think right now what's happening in the global spectrum of streaming. Uh, and where finances is coming in into China via Africa and rotating back into here in the business, you guys have a huge audience, huge. It's merging right now. I want you guys to know that Netflix is in declining in the U.S. and increasing their values in the foreign market, specifically Africa and Asia. That's it. They just uh, took away 150 staff uh, workers this past week another 120 million uh they're going to stop for original content in the u.s per month that money is now shifted to africa so you actually have the upswing you're seeing it the wrong way you're seeing it the wrong way you're speaking to the wrong people and this is the reason why you need to connect the dots with people on the inside who have the utmost information and who can make you pivot your direction because your issue is not an issue you just gotta see this differently. And so now you can start cultivating and start teaching what your differences are built into your story so that you can give us a balance of what that is. You know, and so there's a, there's a line between, it goes back to me. I'm about business of show, not show business. Once I know the business, the show comes easy. Because once I can meet those mandates in dealing with networks, and once I understand where the tide is going when it comes to the money, I can focus on it. So African is the direction. So African-Americans need to actually get with the Africans and figure these things out. Come up with the original content and shoot it here. But don't forgive yourself as being African. Don't try to do that. Just say, hey, this is why we're different. We'll find that commonality of boy meets girl, girl falls in love, they, you know, they break up, they come back. Give me a basic story structure, but I'm telling you right now, you actually have an upswing and every single uh, of one of these streaming networks are looking for more and more and more diverse stories coming from blacks, a period across the board. So, you know, blacks in Sweden, blacks in French, look at France, look at the number one shows coming out. They're led by black lead actors. I want you guys to pay attention. We got Sanaa Lathan doing projects who she's American, but they shooting her over in the Netherlands or in Germany. Pay attention to what's happening. So right now, this is the kind of forum that we need. That's why my thing is all about the business. God gives me that business, I'm gonna lay it down. No filter. Kelly would tell you, 30 years straight, I'm telling no filter. This is facts. I need you guys to pivot. Do not worry about that. I need you guys to understand where we're going to go in this business, how where the money is falling. And all we need to do is be authentic. And they're looking for us to understand. They're looking for the guys who are the PAs who know how to fall down, get back up. They need that. Uh, hello, everybody. My name is Lisa Renee Marshall. I'm an actor. Um, shout out to my brother Howard. Um, I just wanted to ask real quick, this is regarding pitching. Um, you have your product, you have your, uh, your treatment, you've done your character development. The next step, do you need an agent to pitch to major networks? Lisa, Lisa, I, can, can I answer this really quick? I want to say something specifically to you. Yeah. Um, you guys are doing incredible with your plays. Keep that going and build your audience up and start do not leave that audience without cultivating every single one of them, getting their emails, start really building that thing up and start communicating that. Start shooting their examples of what you guys have. Oh, this was a great show. Market yourselves in that way so that you take those shows mm -hmm. and you're doing parodies. I told you before, you're doing parodies. Nothing can stop you. That's why I'm going to be with you guys so that when you guys are confused and feel locked out, talk to me. Come through the Level Up program. Mike was right there. I'm telling you. Okay. I can release this because I'm hearing it every day. I'm on the ground running and I feel like I'm by myself. Well, here's the thing. The project that I'm speaking of is not from DC Black Broadway. 
it's really it really is a series, a television series. And so um, a lot of people, as far as like being in this room, a lot of people don't know what the next step would be once they've done all of the character development, once they've done the episode development, what is the next step? The next step is to uh, really get that script vetted out uh, and to start hitting the mandates. One thing about our Level Up program, again, Michael is there, he can talk about it. Each and every quarter, the networks release a mandate. Each and every quarter now, it used to be once a year, but everything's moving forward. So each and every year, the mandate, and the mandate is specifically designed on what they're looking for to buy. They're giving you tones, they're giving you this and that and the third. They're telling you how much money they're willing to pay you. So when you're looking at your products, you guys are going to have to come through the program. I deal with my agents. I deal with Hollywood agents every day. ICM, William Morris, we deal with these guys on a daily basis. And so we're constantly hearing this, but the mandate is really the key, Lisa. And anybody in there, if you can't get to that mandate, you, not, you need to still start looking at the common topics that's being broadcast every single day. What's the common topics? And then how can you find your story? Does it relate to those common topics in that way? Because what the networks are looking for is the broadest audiences. Mm -hmm. If you coming up with a story uh, and it doesn't have a broad audience and a niche audience, chances are, I don't care if you have the prettiest deck, I don't care if you went and shot a short, it's gonna be trash. Mm -hmm. They're not gonna look at it. So I need you guys to really understand there's certain genres that you can attend to, there's certain uh, structures that you guys can understand and push towards and you're going to have a better chance to close anything because they're looking for a story and they're looking for the quality of story. Mm -hmm. They're also looking for your deck not to connect to all your additional producers and your actors leave all that stuff out. All right, everybody leave all that stuff out. Okay, Got it. let the networks decide they're going to give you guys a list of the actors. Let them decide, let them be as happy as they want to be for your project and say who they want in it as your leads. Because they're the ones who are going to have to pre-sell it across the board. Get off your heart, deal with the business, and then put yourself in it or put yourself around it. That's why Lisa's there. We love Lisa. I've been knowing her forever. I knew she was quality of it and I made it happen. That's why that's Nurse Rachel on season four. Thank you. Did anyone else want to answer on? Okay. I'm sorry, I am a preacher, I guess. You don't no, turn no, me no, up. no, that's, you that's, turn me up. people don't understand, like, unless you're talking about God, hope is not a strategy. Come up with a strategy, own your audience, and say, look, I'm coming with my show with all these people who are willing to support me, like Tyler Perry did, and then it's worth a billion bucks. You can make, you can demand And you, you do want. what you want to do. Yeah, just to, pick you, just to piggyback real quick um, about your docuseries, right? I've been working on a film called More Than Hype. Uh, it's a film about Baltimore's music scene and culture. I started hashtagging just the more than hype, probably like 2013. Every time I post a post on Instagram or Twitter, I'll put hashtag more than hype, right? I used to be a role, uh, role manager and a hype man for artists uh, by the name of King Lowe's from Baltimore. He was uh, signed to Bad Boy. While I was on tour, I would hear people saying, yo, you the dopest hype man alive, you the dopest hype man alive. And I'm like, nah, it's more than hype. And when I meant that, it's more than behind the scenes. There's more stuff that I do. So to make a long story short, I have a 90 minute piece done about Baltimore's music scene and culture, and I started from 1980 to 2014. I didn't worry about where I was gonna get the money from. I didn't worry about if my, my deck was great. I didn't worry about if everybody here was gonna help me. I got it done now, right? I'm being honored at AFRAM next month in Baltimore, right? So you just gotta step out there and just do it, right? Technology allowed us to just do it, right? I ain't getting paid by Nike, but just do it. That's good, these are our last two questions. Come on, let's give it up. This has been amazing. I mean, wow. All right, peace, everybody. My name is Tyrese Brown. Uh, I am a Full sale student, actually, also right now. And my question to you, Leon, is uh, being that I am a creative, how have you constructed a path for yourself where you're still paying your bills, but you're making way for your creativity and being able to share your message that is impactful and actually changing people's lives? Well, that's always an ongoing thing for me, right? I feel like what a system I set up where I, especially just coming from Full Sail, you, you know like the crazy schedule that they give you and whatnot. So taking that and you know coming here, 
I was able to, uh, once I started actually like getting on sets and whatnot, that, that became just like, I treated that like my nine to five. You know I don't have a nine to five where it's just like people call my phone, it's, it's set out. I still kind of treat it like that. So when I had my days off, like, you know, uh, didn't come, I work today, but like let's say today if I was off, I would, um, you know, take the time to, sh to shoot and plan and whatnot. It's really about planning anything, to be honest, especially if you're, you know, you want to still be creative. Because I realized I, once I started getting really into lighting and like super heavy, I, my passion for film kind of went away slowly but surely because I was always working on someone else's project. I was always doing someone else's thing. And it, was just, it got very draining until I finally was like, all right, you know what, I do have time. I don't have to say yes to every job I get. Like my bills are getting paid, like, you know, my mortgage, all right, that's, that's out the way. What else? I still have this five extra $500 a month, I'm gonna throw that to my short. Or I got this extra $300, you know what I'm saying? So it's, you just gotta like put it, like think of it like that, where it's like, if you really want it, you're gonna do it. And just don't chase money. Because when you chase money, you're gonna, you're gonna it, like I was doing, like I just started chasing money and I just wasn't happy. But when I started going back and doing my own, my own thing, it kind of just opened up. And so I, I would say the money's gonna come regardless. So just work on you, like do what makes you happy, get on sets and whatnot, and use that as, a, as an opportunity to learn and meet people and network so you can, so you got a sound guy now that can help you do your film. You got a, you got a AC that can pull focus. I, I don't ever touch a camera. I'm not into lights and whatnot. I can light something. I don't, I couldn't tell you too much about a camera or like the red or whatever it's, it's using, but I know someone that does. So when I call them up, they're gonna bring the camera and we're gonna shoot, you know, you know what I'm saying? Right, right, so right. you work there for, you know, use that full sale. So you already know how it is. So just take the same mentality. And I think it's gonna, it's gonna, especially here, it's gonna work out. All right, well, thank you. Hello, my name is Monique. And um, I had a question about voiceover. I'm a voiceover artist and I'm trying to get in that industry. And I know this is movie and acting, but I wanted to know as far as getting into voiceover in movies or TV, would that be, do YouTube as well to, to go that path? What's the best way? Well, I, uh, you familiar with the bass man? No, I'm not. Marcel? No, I'm Marcel not. is the national um, voice for Sheets. He's from Silver Spring, Merlin. He's from uh, right out here. Okay. Um, he played in We Own the City. He, have, he has workshops. Um, when I get off the stage, I'll give you information. I will take it. That's the Thank best you. I can do. Okay, I appreciate right. it. I wanted to know about that too. There's somebody else I know who had an amazing voice, not me, but somebody else I knew, and I didn't know where they fit, you know, how they get in that industry, because, um, you know, Morgan Freeman has that voice. Yeah. You know, James Earl Jones had that voice. And people are living, like Chris Summer, like the lady who played on our show. I mean, just people are really doing well with voiceover. Wow. Yeah, really yeah. That, right. So that's an industry. And you don't, have to leave a, you don't have to leave your house. You just set up a right. thing. And, uh, another another thing while you're up here, okay. a lot of people, a lot of y'all probably don't know, as because I see a lot of black men in here. The stunt department is looking for black men. Okay? okay. When I say stunts, I'm talking about stunts for movies. They're looking for black men like crazy. I had a kid, he was 18 years old, he's about 6'3, 300 pounds. He played in We Own the City. They casted him to do a stunt. The stunt was throw his face into the brick wall. That kid made 22.50 for an hour, right? When I'm talking to these people, they say there's no, there's no one that looked like us in stunts. So that's another opportunity for y'all out there if you ever thought about it, you know, when we talk about pivoting. Stunts department is looking for guys like us, so please look into it, y'all. It's a lot of money, a lot. Every department. Yeah. And the piggyback off that, there's a, there's a website called Pin Dragon and uh, back, Backstage as well that, that will also like post every, you know, different people, users will post that they're looking for background actor or back, not background, um, voiceovers and okay. uh, different actors and j things in general for that. So I would say like look at those type of websites. Okay. Um, and I don't know if so much like casting direct directors really would do it too much, but there's like I said, Thea, um, casting by Thea okay. on um, Instagram, she does a lot of casting. Well, I'm gonna get all that information. Let me get my phone, I'm gonna get all that all right, from cool. you. Thank we'll you so afterwards. much yeah. and appreciate it. This was amazing. I'm sorry, we have to wrap this up. This has been just an amazing, come on and give everybody a great big hand clap. Come on, would you give Kelly, Leon, Larry, a great big hand clap. This has been an amazing event. And I also want to honor Patty and Michael for just putting yourself out there. Howard, thank you so much for just coming on with your wealth of knowledge. This has been amazing and I hope you all have a lot of takeaways from this today. I mean, to just to be able to glean from people who have been in an industry for years. Patty, I'm gonna turn the rest of this over to you for a closeout. And we are just, come on and give Patty and Michael a great big hand clap. Awesome, you all are some awesome people. Well, you guys, I really, well, we really hope you enjoyed everything you heard today. You heard it from the insiders, the ones who have the experience. They understand this business and they know the kinds of things that you need to do to get to that next level. And right now, um, I'm going to turn it over to Michael really quickly. Just
just so he can just share a little bit of a what's next with you. So just hold tight for just one more yes, moment. Yes, sir. Some way we can fix that? Okay, cool. Yeah, so like you said, next steps, because you know, you are a network, heard some good advice, but the Lord has it for all of you all to be your own filmmakers. Although you're working on sets and things like that, gain the knowledge and networking. The Lord has it to where he, he's giving you story ideas, scripts. And so that's what this level up is. It's, you know, okay, you have the story, but there's an industry way to actually format it to where you get greenlit. And then there's money waiting for you if your script is in that format. And so that's what Howard teaches. Um, <clears throat> sorry, that's what Howard teaches and things like that. Um, he taught me and things like that. And so that's why we're com uh, cultivating this community. So please, let's stay connected. Um, reach out to me. I will answer everyone because everyone that wants this opportunity will get it, you know? And so on Instagram, Twitter, I, at I am Cleos, I A M K L E O S, I A M K L E O S. Um, my Facebook is Michael Cleos Chen, K L E O S. I have, I, I'm, I, look, I made my first feature film and that was like my calling card to be able to say, okay, I have some type of potential, you know, but it's all the Lord. Um, it's called The Wages of Sin. It's available on Tubi, so it's free to stream, The Wages of Sin. Glory to God, glory to God. Um, so yeah, the Lord has it, each and every one of you, are you, you are filmmakers. You all have scripts and ideas, so now it's time to get it formatted correctly um, and we'll teach you that. So we have something coming up next month. Howard has something coming up next month, so if you all, if you all didn't, please make sure to put your email, contact information and such. Um, because, oh, yeah, y'all can see it up there. Because basically, um, we'll send out like an e-blast to everyone. Um, like I say, even stay connected to me, I will respond. So we'll make sure to send out an e-blast within the next 24, 48 hours to where you all can get these next steps. And it's important that we all stay connected and we, we bring content to the kingdom of Christ. Yes, definitely. And um, we're, we are going to conclude here. If you want to look me up on... Um, Facebook, I'm at Patty Rice, R-I-C-E, or on Instagram, it's Patty Rice Writer. Um, we do have a Facebook group that's called DMV Faith-Based Filmmakers Network, but definitely, just as Michael said, um, make sure if you haven't, put your information on the sheet, um, you know, the sign-in sheet, because, you know, we, we're connected with Howard, he's gonna be teaching a lot of awesome things, and we're going to be putting out a, um, a monthly, uh, call it a newsletter, call it a resource, um, you know, an information email that we're going to be putting out every month that's going to have all kind of great information about contests, festivals that you need to have on your radar, um, different resources, conferences, workshops that Howard, Tresta, different uh, ones are doing. We have, um, you know, other people that are uh, networked with Howard who are going to be coming and doing more panels, teaching more workshops. So stay connected, stay in the know. This is the thing that I learned. I am gonna be shooting my first short film in a few weeks and I'm really excited about it. And it's all because God made these connections for me. So I'm even, you know, coming up and leveling up. So if you love your craft, begin to continue to master it, begin to continue to get that, those people, those connections the information that you need, continue to keep doing that. Don't stop, don't let anything stop your dream from happening. Because all of these folks that were up here talking about all of the things that they've done, they basically just didn't give up. They had a lot of tribulations and things that they went through. That's what Faith was talking about. But they didn't give up on their dream, they just kept going for it. So don't let anything stop you from what you know God put in you to do. You got a story to tell, tell it. And for me, with my short film, it was just as easy for me to be like, God, I believe you. Let me go in these Facebook groups and just put something out there and say, hey, I want to shoot a short film, a faith-based short film, and this is what it's about. God sent every person, the cinematographer, the script supervisor, the first AD, the second AD. And these were people with experience. These were people that were like, oh, yeah, I want to work on something because it's their passion. So you never know until you put yourself out there what's waiting on the other side of fear for you. So just stay connected. God is doing something with this community. I'm trying to tell everybody, stay connected to faith-based filmmakers. And you're going to see some amazing things that God is going to do. Let's do something fun. Can we like take a selfie with someone that you don't know? Because you know, I mean, you don't know who you, you know, so you don't know who you're in a room with. And, um, Let's see. Have, 